Losing customers? Want to get a better handle on your customer relationships? Thanks for joining guys. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to use machine learning to predict churn. But specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how to do this using auto AI and eventually how to export our code into a Python Jupyter notebook. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look as to what we're going to be covering today. So today we're going to be taking a look at how to use machine learning to predict churn. We're then going to learn how to use that machine learning model to make predictions on new data. And last but not least, we're going to take that same machine learning model and we're going to export it automatically into a Jupyter Notebook. So we'll be able to take all the pipelines that we've trained and leverage that inside of our existing Python Notebook. Now, before we get too much further, let's take a quick look at what churn is. So churn occurs when a customer or an employee leaves a company. So this is particularly important in business because it's a lot more expensive to attract a new customer than it is to retain an existing one. So companies around the world try to minimize churn so that they can stop losing customers and effectively improve their bottom line. Now we can use a machine learning technique called binary classification to help us predict churn. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So how exactly are we going to be doing this? So we're going to be taking a CSV data set that has some historical data on customers that have churned. We're then going to take that data set and import it into Watson Studio. So Watson Studio is an all-in-one data science environment. So anything that you might want to do as a data scientist, you can do it within there. We're then going to use that same CSV inside of Watson Studio to build a machine learning model using Auto AI. So Auto AI allows you to automate your Python machine learning pipelines and effectively gives you all of those pipelines to deploy as REST APIs at the end. Once those models are finished training, we're then going to export that model, save it as a REST API, but we're also going to take that same machine learning model and generate a Jupyter Notebook with the underlying code for that machine learning model. Want to get into it? Let's do it. Alrighty, so every good data science project starts out with some data. So let's go on ahead and grab some data. So in this case, we're going to Kaggle and there's a telco customer churn data set that we're going to be using. I'll drop a link in the comments below if you want to grab that, uh, so don't fret. Now what we're going to do is just download that data set. And you can see we've downloaded it here. And then we're going to extract that in Finder because it's going to show up as a zip file. So we can extract that. And that's extracted now. Let's just rename that to data set dash churn. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to step inside of Watson Studio. So Watson Studio is where we're going to be doing the majority of our machine learning and training. So if we go over to Watson Studio, if you haven't signed up for an account yet, you can just go to dataplatform.com, oh sorry, dataplatform.cloud.ibm.com and you can sign up for an account there. It's pretty easy. Now, in this case, we're going to create a project. So a project sort of encapsulates all of your data science assets. So we'll create an empty project and we'll call it telco churn auto AI. So remember, auto AI is going to be the tool that allows us to build an automated Python machine learning pipeline. So eventually, if you stick around to the end of the video, we're going to export our machine learning pipeline into a Jupyter notebook. So we can then take that and really use it wherever we want. So let's hit create. And then so from our home screen within our project, we can start adding different assets to our project. So in this case, we're going to go add to project. And the first thing that we're going to do is create an auto AI experiment. So from this sort of asset type page, we can start adding the different things that we want to our project. So here we're going to add auto AI experiment. And before we actually go into our experiment, we need to associate a machine learning service. So this helps us perform our training and eventually deploy it to a REST API later on if we want to. So here we're going to hit associate machine learning instance. Now, if you don't have one, you can just hit new, create one and hit create down the bottom. In this case, we've already got one set up. So I can just hit select from existing service, choose that one and hit select. Then if I hit reload, you can see my service is now associated. Alrighty, now what we're going to do is name our experiment. So here we'll call it churn prediction. 
Python export because we're going to export it as a Python Jupyter notebook later on once our models finish training. Then we're going to hit create. And then the next thing that we're going to do is upload our data. So remember we downloaded that Kaggle data early on. Now we're just going to upload it into our project so we can start working with it. So here we'll hit browse and go to our downloads. And in this case, it was called dataset dash churn. So let's grab that and open that up. Now, as soon as we select that, Auto AI is going to start pre-processing our data. So it's going to take a look at what columns we've got in there. So in this particular data set, we've actually got a column called churn. And if we go and take a look at that, You can see that on the far right hand side, we've actually got a column that says churn or that it's titled churn and we've got no and yes. So yes basically means that our customer has left the business. No means that they're still with our business. So they've been retained. Now what we want to do is train a machine learning model that allows us to predict whether or not the customer is likely to churn or not. So effectively whether or not they're going to be a yes or a no. Now, as soon as we upload our data set into Auto AI, it's automatically going to pre-process those columns, as I was mentioning. So what we can do is just scroll on down to our churn column, select that, and you can see automatically it's going to select the best type of machine learning for this particular task. So in that case, this is binary classification. So if we wanted to change this, we can go into experiment settings and change that if we wanted to. It's fine for now, it's going to work and it'll also choose our optimization metric. So in this case, it's going to train our model to optimize its model accuracy. Cool, that's all done. All we now need to do is just hit run experiment. Awesome, so that's now kicked off. Now, what's going to happen as soon as we hit run experiment is Auto AI is going to start building a machine learning pipeline. Now, what it's actually going to do is it's going to go through all the same steps that you really should be doing in any data science project. So if we hit swap view over here, you can see that it's going to read in our data set. It's going to split it into a training, testing and holdout partition. So that allows us to try to minimize the bias within our model. It'll also read out our or read in our training data, perform some pre-processing. So it might fill in some missing values, might perform some other pre-processing. Then it's also going to run through a bunch of different types of algorithms. So in this case, a lot of these models are Python packages. So a lot of them come from scikit-learn. So you've got uh, extreme gradient boosting, um, light GBM, and a whole bunch of others. Now, once it's started doing that, it's actually going to run through each one of these pipelines here. So you can see our first one's already finished training. Come to that in a second. It's also going to perform some hyperparameter optimization to try to build a better model perform some feature engineering, then perform some HPL again. So effectively, after it's finished this sort of stream, you'll have one, two, three, four pipelines. Then what it's also going to do is it's going to come down this stream and it's going to choose another algorithm and then do the same. So you'll get another five, six, seven, eight pipelines. So all up, you should have a leaderboard of eight machine learning pipelines. Now you can see that a few of them have finished training already. And as you get better results, Auto AI is automatically going to select the best possible machine learning model for this particular task. And you can see it's starred pipeline number two there because at the moment that's the one that's performing best. So if we go down to pipeline number two, we can actually open that up and you can see our accuracy for pipeline number two is better than pipeline number one. Hence, that's been chosen as the, the best model at the moment. The whole pipeline set hasn't finished. so. It's not going to choose the best potential model until that's completely done. If we wanted to, we could stop it there and just choose pipeline number two and deploy that one, but we're gonna let it run and finish all those models. Now you can also see here that you get a whole bunch of evaluation metrics. So this allows you to delve a little bit deeper to see what's actually behind one of these pipelines. Now, if you wanted to as well, you can actually step into one of these pipelines and get some really cool information on what features are most important in your particular model. So if I scroll all the way down here, you can see that tenure's flagged is probably one of our most important features. Likewise, online security seems to be important. So in terms of our telecommunications company that's trying to minimize churn, they might take a look and go, hey, we need to take a look at tenure because we're losing a lot of customers 
uh, that have either high or low tenure. Likewise, they can interrogate whether or not they've got online security packages and internet service. So quite quickly, you can get an idea as to what features are important within your machine learning model or not. Now we're going to step back and wait for all our pipelines to finish training. And then we're going to deploy our model to a Jupyter Notebook and take a look at that. Five minutes later. Oh, hi there. We're back. So now all of our machine learning model pipelines have finished training and you can see that pipeline number four is the best performing model. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy that model, make some predictions, and then we'll come back and we're going to convert that into its Jupyter Notebook so that we can play around with it in Python. So in this case, what we need to do is just go to pipeline number four and hit save as model. And so we're just going to leave the naming, hit save. And so when we save this model, we can then deploy it and make a bunch of predictions against it. So we can then, from this page, so this is the model save page, so you've got a bunch of information about the model. We can then go to deployments, hit add deployment. And then we're just going to call this uh, churn API and hit save. So when we actually deploy this, this actually creates a REST API. So if you wanted to integrate this into other apps or use the Python request library, you could do that. Um, if you've got JavaScript apps, you could do that as well. So um, I've seen this integrated into a whole bunch of different types of applications. So the world is your oyster. We're gonna wait for this to finish deploying. And then once that's deployed, we can start making some predictions and then we'll go back, create that Jupyter notebook. Alrighty, so our model is now deployed. You can see the status is now showing up as ready. So what we can do is step into that API and we can actually test it out by going to test. All right, and so the first thing that we're going to do is input a customer ID. So if we scroll back, let's just grab uh, any customer ID. So we'll grab this one, we'll grab this one. Paste that in, and then for gender, we're gonna type in uh, what's that male, senior citizen, we'll put zero, so partner. So yes, no. Let's just try yes, no. And so basically what we're doing now is we're scoring. So we're entering in some data and we're pushing it against our deployed predictive model to try to get a prediction as to whether or not this particular type of customer will churn or not. So in this case, we'll put tenure, we'll put it as a one. Phone service, we'll set that as yes. Multiple lines, we'll say yeah, sure, they've got multiple lines. No internet, no online security, no online backup. Uh, no device protection tech support. Yeah, sure. Why not? Streaming TV. Yep. Streaming movies. Yep. Contract is month to month or one year. So let's put month to month. Yep. Cool. All right. So paperless billing. We're going to say yes. And then Yes, and payment method is, what does that need to be? Let's take a look at that column there. Uh, we'll say electronic check. Monthly charges, uh, $29.95. Uh, total charges, yeah, $129. Now, if we hit predict, what's gonna happen is all of this data is going to be sent to our deployed machine learning model and then ideally what we should get back is a prediction result. So whether or not, yes, they're, they're likely to churn or no, they're likely to stay with our company. So if we hit predict, you can see this customer is going to stay with our company. So it looks like we're, we're all good. Now, if we changed a bunch of stuff, so say, uh, I know their tenure is going to be 10 years. Let's try predicting again. Okay, so now they're gonna churn. So you can see by changing some of these factors, we're gonna get different types of prediction results. So you can see now that we've gone and deployed our machine learning model. If we wanted to, we can go to implementation and there's all the code there to deploy this as a REST or to use it as a REST API in Java, JavaScript, Scala, and just basic URL requests. So you've got a whole bunch of stuff there to work with. Now, what we wanna do though, is we wanna export this as a Jupyter Notebook. So if we go back to our project, 
and step back into our auto AI experiment. We can actually go back to our model and before we hit save as and went to our model, in this case, we're going to hit notebook instead. Then we want to select auto AI lib notebook and hit save. So this is now going to generate a Jupyter Notebook and we're actually going to be able to extract the Python code that sits beneath those auto AI pipelines. Cool, so that's fine. We'll leave it as that naming convention and hit create. And so now our Jupyter Notebooks is automatically going to start opening and then we'll be able to play around with it. And see what's behind the scenes really. Perfect, cool. So this is our generated Python notebook. So if we step through, we can hit shift enter to run each cell and you can see, we can see all the libraries that are behind these models. We can step through it. And if we wanted to, we can go and change all of the information in this and tweak our model till our heart's content. So we're not gonna spend too much time looking through this. We'll take a look at that in another video, but if you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment in the comments below. That about wraps up this tutorial. So let's quickly recap on what we did. We built a machine learning model or rather eight machine learning models using auto AI. We then deployed one machine learning model as a REST API and made some predictions. So when we saw whether or not a customer was likely to churn or not after we entered in all that data. And last but not least, we took that same machine learning model and we generated the underlying Python code using auto AI's notebook feature. And that about wraps up today's tutorial. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see any videos from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace.